QuickBooks Desktop 2024 negative accounts receivable, subscription unearned revenue, monthly invoicing, and revenue recognition. Get ready and some coffee because we're locking into some non-stop QuickBooks Desktop 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our QuickBooks desktop sample company file. We set up in a prior presentation looking at the enterprise version of the QuickBooks desktop software so we can practice using the new unearned revenue feature within it. In the view dropdown, we have the hide icon bar selected open windows list selected open windows on the left hand side company drop down we have the home page open let's go to the reports opening our major financial statement reports as we do every time reports and company and financial starting off with the balance sheet standard customize the report change the range 010127 tab 123127 january to december 2027 fonts and numbers i'm going to bring that font on up to 14 like we do every time okay yes please and okay dropping down the reports again company and financial this time the p the l the profit the loss the income statement changing the range but i only want three months out this time so from 010127 tab 12 not 12 oh three thirty one two seven three months out that's what we agreed upon so then we're going to say that this is total only no we want month by month breaking it out month by month for scenario by scenario here customizing the report so we can see it better in the uh screen recordings fonts and numbers changing the font on up to 14 again okay yes okay there's the setup process we do every time let's go back to the home page and we're comparing scenarios here on how we can deal with this unearned revenue situation so we started with a normal scenario we had an estimate we make the estimate into a sales order if you don't have the enterprise version you might not have a sales order but it's kind of just like locking in the estimate and then in a normal process we might simply go to the invoice at that point we possibly also might need to buy inventory in some cases in which case we can buy inventory but on the sales side the next step would be the invoice we receive the payment then we make a deposit but what if we want to get the deposit first two scenarios will run in first scenario we have a big sale of something and we get a deposit like on our surfboard the psychedelic surfboard that we sold and we wanted to get a down payment because we had to order the custom surfboard and we want to make sure that someone is committed to it so that we can make the order in that case we made an estimate we made a sales order and then we jumped over to the receive payment and there's two ways we can think about receiving that receive payment the old way using a negative ar which still has its pros and cons and or the new way which would be linking it to the unearned revenue which is the new thing which we'll talk about later we've practiced the old way the negative ar then we entered the invoice which maps out the ar uh, uh as well bringing us back into our normal spot once we get the psychedelic surfboard and then we had to receive payment and and we're good to go and we end it off or we can have a subscription model which is the model we're focused on this time in which case we might have this, the same estimate we might make the sales order but then we're going to go to the receive payment here not have to deal with inventory possibly but receive like a year's worth of money up front and that's just our normal model like a newspaper model or a magazine model or an online application model some kind of subscription service type of model so the way we should recognize the revenue then is by not recording the invoice 
when we get the money, because we haven't earned it at that point in time, we should put it into unearned revenue or liability. But under the old method, we could still use the negative receivable in that case if we wanted to. That's what we're practicing this time, and then we'll compare it to the new method. So this time we have this negative receivable that we put in place. So we're imagining we sell some kind of subscription, a newspaper or something like that. Last time we did the estimate, we did the sales order, and then we received the payment. In our case, we're saying five months of payment up front, and then now we're going to have to invoice the client and that's what we're going to be doing uh, this time okay so let's recap the process so if i go into the customers drop down customers and the customer center then on the left hand side we named our customer the third because this is the third scenario with that we ran we first made the estimate here's the estimate opening that up and notice that what we did here, which is different than the deposit scenario, we actually made a different item for each line item of a monthly payment, which might make it a little bit easier when we're trying to tie that out and recognize the revenue because we broke it out into revenue recognition chunks of monthly uh, chunks that we can pull over to the invoices. So I'm going to close this back out. We, we, con we converted that then. Nothing was recorded from that. That was an internal uh, document that we're tracking. Then we had the, the sales order that we created from the estimate. Looks very much the same here that we have on the sales order, pulling it out, also internal document. And then we've created the payment, which is the prepayment. And we note that when we got the payment, usually it's linked to an invoice, but it's not in this case, resulting in this negative accounts receivable for this customer of the 188.56. If I look at that from a journal entry standpoint, the journal entries over here, then uh, we have the estimate, the sales order, the sales receipt. This is the only one that had an actual transaction. If that was the only thing in our books, it would increase cash and the other side's not going to revenue and not on the income statement because we have not yet earned it. It should be going to, an, to a liability account, but it's not. We're doing the old method that it's in the accounts receivable as a negative receivable, which will not necessarily convert your whole receivable to negative as it's doing here because you'll have other receivables in there possibly. But that for that one client, it's basically a negative receivable and technically that would be wrong for reporting purposes, but it's pretty easy to track from an internal bookkeeping purpose because now we only have one subledger tying out to this accounts receivable. That's like the pros and cons of it. If I, just to check that out again, if I close this out and I go to my balance sheet over here, then we can go to the AR. So here's the AR. If I look at the sub report of that, Reports drop down and we go down to the customers and receivables and take a look at the AR uh, balance detail report, let's say. So there's our AR. See how it's in there as a negative for that particular client? Let's customize it and make it larger fonts and numbers. So it's a little, so let's go 12 this time. Let's not go crazy with the 14. It's just bringing it up to 12. So there's the negative AR. Now, now note that my total AR is not negative, right? So if I go down here, it's, it's still 92,819 on the positive because I have other AR in there that's positive. But, for, but it should be then, if I go back to my balance sheet, it's, and it ties in over here. That's the point. The subledger ties in. That's the good thing. The bad thing is uh, the AR is, is understated and we should be breaking it out for a liability, but it's a timing difference. Uh, and so that's the, that's the pros and cons. Okay, so now if I go back to the homepage, what's the next step? Well, in this case, we, we did the estimate, we did the sales order, and then we did the receive payment. Now, we're, unlike the deposit scenario with the psychedelic surfboard, we don't need to collect anymore. We've collected all that we're going to collect until the next round of, of the next year, or in our case, five months of payment. So what we're going to do is now just periodically, monthly, as we do the work, we're going to invoice and the invoices are going to be then lowering the accounts receivable, which has a negative balance in it because we'll apply the credits out to it. And the other side is going to go to revenue, recording revenue as we earn it, which so that's going to be what we'll do here. So let's do that. We'll go to the uh, customer centers, probably, probably where we would go that not that one. 
customer center. And then I'm gonna create the invoices from the sales order. So I'm gonna open the sales order and then I'm gonna piece out these one at a time, these monthly chunks uh, one at a time. So I'm gonna say, okay, let's go up top and say we're gonna create an invoice from it. And then it says create invoice for all the sales orders. I'm gonna say create invoice for selected items. We only want the selected items because I'm gonna be pulling in one of these items at a time. So we'll say, okay. So, and if I'm on the first month, I'm gonna unselect all these and just select the first month. And then you see how, see how that works. That's why we created these items, imagining that this subscription was for five months in our case, so that we can recognize revenue one month at a time. So I'm gonna go, okay, let's do it. So now we have our invoice. So our invoice tabbing through it, tabbing through it. We got 03, let's say uh, 0727, tab, 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 tab. It pulled in just that first item of the subscription model for, for month number one. That's what that one stands for. We probably could have named it a little bit better, but it's for $35 because we said the total was gonna add up uh, to whatever the total that we thought it should add up to. <laughs> so it came out to 35, I think it was, what did we do? Let's. Let's, what is this whatever stuff? You're the one doing the problem. Can't you tell us? It was 175 divided by five months, $35. Okay. And then, and then uh, we had the sales tax. Now you might not have a sales tax if it's a service item, depending on where you're located, but that complicates it a little bit. So we'll add the sales tax just to make it a little bit more complex in case that's a thing. That's going to be 271 and that's going to give us the 37 uh, 71. Now, no, this probably wouldn't happen till the month after that we issued it. So it probably should better be in like 040127, let's say. And then, so then there's uh, the 3771. If I, rec so what's that going, what's that going to do? It's an invoice. Invoice is going to increase accounts receivable which for this customer has a negative balance, right? So we'll decrease the negative balance in accounts receivable for that customer in the sub ledger. And then the other side's gonna be going to revenue and we don't have to deal with inventory or cost of goods sold in this case, because we're not tracking that in here. So if we did that over here on just journal entries, we would say, okay, AR is going up, uh, but then we have to deal with the sales tax because we had a sales tax thing happening. And then the sales, and then we have sales or income. So the amount is gonna be, uh, the amount is gonna be equal to, the sales is gonna be gonna say negative 175 divided by five or 35 credit. And then the sales, wait, that was the sales. Let's put that down here. And then the sales tax, I'd rather un reverse these two. Sorry about this. I apologize. I'm going to reverse those two. I think it looks better that way. I think it looks better that way. Okay. And then the sales tax we said was uh, 0.0775. So I'm going to say this is going to be equal to this times 0.0775. And then that means the receivable. Oh, now, now this is all in the wrong thing. This should be over here. This is just, you're just messing it. Do it over. No, I'm not doing it over invoice number one let's say month one and then this is going to be negative sum of these two okay it makes sense we know what's happening so now this negative receivable is going to go down so if i double click on this and say plus negative receivables goes down and so then so now i have five months left of the receivable right and then or four months left because there was five total and then we have the income is going up by 35 and then we have the sales tax payable is going up so now we're recognizing the revenue of the 35 that's an increase that's income that's why it's green of the revenue uh, as we earn it so let's do that over here and say record it and check it out on this side save it and close it and see if that is indeed what happens so we're going to go to the balance sheet and we'll go into the a to the r and we're gonna say that this happened on the A to the R Doan day. I think I had the date. I should have put the date as a four and I put it as a one. 
So I'm gonna double click on it. Let's go back into it. You're really just a mess today. You just, it's just, everybody's gonna be confused. Get ready to hear about this in the comments. So I'm gonna save that. Okay, so there it is there. So, so now, so there's that. I'm gonna close that back out. And then the other side is going to the revenue on the profit and loss. And so I'm gonna bring this out to 04, uh, 30, 2, 7, let's say. So now we have the income that was recognized over here, no income recognized in March because we're collecting it on a month by month basis. And we'll say that we collected it or we earned it in April. I probably should have said I earned it like at the end of March or part of March and part of April if it was over. Let's actually bring it back to March here. I'm gonna go back into it. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? No, it's not that bad. I'm gonna go, cause then it gives me more room so we can see it. And then I'm gonna say, save it there. So then, okay, so now we recognize it in March and then we'll, the next one we'll recognize in April. So we'll just get an idea of how this kind of, how this works because, okay, so that's gonna be what we do. And then if I go to the balance sheet and we go to the, cust if I go to the customer balance detail uh, report and scroll up to the top, we've got the payment and notice how these fit together nicely. That's what's good about this report or this method. Even though I still have a negative receivable, which is technically wrong, it's really easy to see what is happening on one sub ledger. That's the benefit of it. It's like, oh, okay, well, there's the payment and there's the invoice that mapped out right to the payment. And then in the customer center, uh, you could see it pretty easily over here because here's the invoice and uh and we see the payment and it's netting out and here's the balance now if i go back into the invoice uh it hasn't been applied out i should have applied it out so i could apply the credits now i think there's if you have the certain settings on it'll do that automatically it, like when you say close it'll say hey there's a credit that you can assign out here uh but that's not always good to have on all the time because you don't always want to apply that out so i can manually apply it so let me show you what i mean this amount right here for uh, the the payment, if I go into that, I could apply it out to this invoice this way uh, and apply it, apply, apply it out that way. This invoice wasn't there when we made the payment because we made the payment before the invoice. But it's probably easier to go back into this invoice and then say we want to apply the credit. So I'm gonna apply the credit. Now it's applying out uh, that credit amount of 188.56, only 37.71 of it, leaving us the balance of 150.85 done. And this isn't going to record uh, anything new, but it gives us the information at the bottom here. So it still records the same thing. So I don't have to like go back and look at the financials again. It's still recording uh, accounts receivable increase 37.71. The, the sales increase 35 and the sales tax increase of 271, even though we're not actually charging anyone anything. This is just an informational thing at the bottom. And this is of course an invoice that we could give to somebody if we wanted to, to show the, 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 the subscription as it was passing uh, and, and as it you know, was up being applied out as we did the work, as the, as the months passed. Okay, so then let's do it again. So, so in this process, unlike the, the psychedelic surfboard deposit, uh, we're going to just keep doing the invoicing. This is like the classic book problem scenario for an accounting problem where you're doing like a subscription model. So now I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep on every month doing the same thing until the subscription is up, right? So we would go, so I could go back into my customer balance detail. We'll imagine, no, customer center. We'll imagine another month has passed. And so I'm going to say, okay, that's what I'll say. That's what I'll say. Okay. And then let's go in here and I'm going to make another invoice from this, but I'm going to make it from just the invoice for selected items. Okay. And so the first one's unchecked because I already did that one. So now I'm just going to uncheck the rest of them. I just want the second, the next month. And I'll say, okay, boom. That's what I say. Okay. I say, okay, a lot. I say I'm going to say okay, and then I do it. 
because when I say I'm going to do something, then I do it. Okay. And I said I was going to say okay. And so, okay. That's what I've done. I keep my word. Okay. So there we have it. So then this is going to be doing the same thing. The invoice is going to increase accounts receivable, which has a negative balance in the sub ledger for this customer. And it's going to uh, do that for 3771, including the sales tax. The other side is going to go to revenue for 35. And then sales tax payable is going to go up. If I see that with a journal entry this way, it would be month invoice month number two. Let's see if I can do this better this time. Don't mess it up this time like you did last time confused everyone so that's why I get to do it a few times so that like since I can see it's going to be exactly the same right uh I messed people up last time but this time I'll do it right accounts receivable let's go up here double click on it go to the end of it plus and there's the 37 so AR is going down still negative but you could see what's happening here. So it's still not exactly proper, but easy to follow, which is a good thing. Follow, followability is something I look for in accounting systems and, uh, and stuff, being able to like follow along and understand what in the world is happening around here. Let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. I like to get things straight because I'm gonna save and close. I deal with a lot of handwritten records and they have crooked T accounts and crooked ledgers. And so what I do is I put them into QuickBooks so I can get the records straight. So resulting in records that are really just a pure delight to interact with. Why? Because I, because I put the records straight. Well, QuickBooks helped a little bit, but I put the records straight. So what was I doing here? Uh, I'm going to, now I've recorded that. So let's go to the balance sheet and then let's go into the accounts receivable. And so there's this one. So there's a 37. You can see the pattern. The other side's going into revenue. So if I go into the revenue side of things, so now see I'm recognizing it uh, each month out on the revenue. If I go into my customer balance detail report, then you can see the e invoice pattern. So again, it's not correct because it, because it should be a liability, but quite easy to follow. You can see. So then I can, let's do one more. Uno vase mas one more time. Puff, por favor, please. And then we're going to say, since you said the magic word, we'll do it again. Invoice one more time. Create the invoice. Okay. Okay, you didn't say the ma I said the magic word, but I heard the magic word, so that's good enough. I so there we have it. And so this is going to increase the AR again. Let's do it for uh, 05, 05, 31, 27. And so increase AR by the, by the 37, increase revenue by 35, and the liability by the two. Let's do it one more time. Well, let's record it over here first on Excel. So I keep the pattern going over here. I'm going to copy that, paste it down here, but it's a number three month. A to the R. Let's just copy this down, copy it down, copy it down. And then this is going to equal the 37. Let's copy that down. And so what happens now after the next month, the AR would go down again. If this was, so this is like the only thing in there, you can see, right? It's still wrong because it's negative AR instead of a positive liability under revenue, but easy to follow, easy to have the sub ledger. Ease of easiness is, is a good thing. Don't let anyone convince you otherwise. Easiness, it's supposed to be easy. So stuff's, if stuff's not easy, something you're thinking about it wrong or someone's lying to you probably because they're making it complicated to try to sound smart or something so there we have that okay and then so if we so now we can see what's left in here we had three months pass and it was 35 a month times two right equals 35 times two so is that is that how how what yeah i didn't include the sales tax though so it was, <laughs> if I include the sales tax, it's uh, 
divided by 5 and, and now uh, times 2. So there's 7542. So that's what's left two months worth, uh, including the sales. And again, the sales tax are kind of throwing, you know, a, a little bit of wrench into the situation here. But uh, so so you might have to deal with the sales tax in different ways, depending on where you're at. But there it is. The general concept is still clear. See, the government is one of those people that try to make that they make things complicated. That's what I'm talking about. It should be easy, but no, but no, government comes in and taxes it. Don't worry, the tax is going to be simple. You'll understand it. How am I supposed to under? It makes no sense. You wrote a law, a bill, and then called it like some crazy name, like an inflation reduction act that has nothing to do with like what you named the bill after. And then it tells me to do all this stuff that I don't know how. Anyways. You can see the pattern here. And then if you go into the profit and loss, uh, we can see the pattern over here, but something's wrong. Let's go into the customer center. Uh, something, oh, I need to change the range. You need to change the range. Going out to 053127. So there we have the pattern, 35 being picked up per month. Uh, the total net income thus far at 255. Is that what we have over here? No, it is not. But I'm just looking for these three months. So I've got th 35 plus 35 plus 35, 105. So that's what we have over here, 105 for this third one because the other two months we're using the, the last one. So we did scenario number one uh, with, uh, with no the normal routine, no prepayment. Scenario number two, the psychedelic surfboard deposit. Scenario number three is the unearned revenue subscription model where we haven't yet collected all the revenue uh, because we're, we only went three months out instead, instead of the last two of the five months. But hopefully that gives you an idea of the normal kind of processes and how they might work under the negative AR system. And then in future presentations, we'll do the same latter two uh, uh, with the with the unearned revenue, which will add another account over here on the balance sheet instead of having, and we'll see some pros and cons because again, it's great to have the unearned revenue properly recorded down here, but it also means that we have two accounts that we have to deal with subledgers for our customers, which makes it a little bit more difficult on the bookkeeping uh, side of things, but th those are the pros and cons.